We all have the capacity to make change within ourselves, in the world, and in our relationship to that world. My son Everett is now a teenager. Just this past summer, he was on Stanford's campus riding his bike home from the gym when he came upon a young Asian woman jogging toward him along the same wide path. When she looked up and saw him, she veered off the path. And that simple gesture got Everett's attention. When we discussed the encounter later, he said to me, it made me feel like maybe more self-conscious about my actions and how I come off to other people. It made me sad too, kind of. It made me sad too. Whether on a high crime street in Oakland or in a leafy green neighborhood on the edge of Stanford's campus, my son now has to manage how he is seen. He has to grow accustomed to the fact that people may experience fear at the sheer sight of him. This is my same son who, when he was five, had casually presumed the lone black male passenger on our airplane might be a dangerous robber. He doesn't even remember that. Now, 11 years later, he is becoming the target of his own perceptions. The shift in that jogger's trajectory led Everett and me down a track that neither of us wanted to be on. And it surfaced our own fears about what lay ahead. I thought about those middle-aged Chinese women in Oakland who became fearful of the young black men who might snatch their purses. The young men they couldn't tell from one another. My son had now joined that broad demographic that ignites the sort of primal fears that fuel implicit bias. But with new appreciation, I also recognize that the capacity for growth comes from our willingness to reflect, to probe in search of some actionable truth. So many people among us are probing, reaching, searching to do good and be good in the best way they know how. And there is hope in the sheer act of reflection. That is where the power lies and how the process starts. My son, in his own way, is discovering that. At the end of our talk about why the jogger avoided him, Everett said to me, I'm not really sure, but I think she maybe just got nervous. After the woman passed, Everett looked back and noticed that she had returned to the path. He moved ahead with his journey too. He kept pedaling, heading home to get ready for a new day.